Okay, I uh, just want to share with you a little project um, that we've just done at school and I just uh, want to begin here. Like I've made a model of the sun um, and it's a square sun. And I got this idea um, from watching my children play Minecraft and staring at the sun in Minecraft and realizing that it was a square and everything's very blocky. And I used origami to make this model and I just put a bit of time into this um, just because I wanted to generate a bit of interest in class and get the students thinking along the same same line. So I've got my model of the sun there. I made a model of the earth and um, this one's been knocked around a little bit. Um, but I glued some paper on there for the poles and I stuck a uh, bamboo skewer through there just to represent the tilted axis um, or the you know, spins on, which is important. I uh, don't think that's a concept that uh, students really understand until you make it, um, make it like this. And it's interesting to see how, when they make their models, how they stick that bamboo skewer through their model. Um, and finally, I've just got a um, model of the moon here. So what I'm really looking for is an interactive um, way for students to um, take, take a unit of work that is really, Lots of diagrams, lots of knowledge, but not a lot of practical activities and, and no real scope for them, for the students to interact in any way to understand um, a really dynamic system, predictable, but dynamic um, system with a lot of moving parts. So um, we'll show you in a moment, uh, I asked the students to make these origami water bombs. And this is a challenge in itself for some students. Um, they do like making them and they do like the final stage where you blow them up. So um, I think that's a really useful tool in a classroom, not only for science, um, but for maths, uh, being able to fold one of those water bombs. Um, and for the students that struggle, uh, or the students who didn't come into class, they'd been away for a while, um, and still needed to do this and didn't have necessarily have the time nor the skill or the patience to um, build a model. Uh, I've just allowed them to cut out some paper and use these types of models. Um, because at the end of the day, I think it's, imp I, I really like the opportunity that to give students a chance to fold some origami and learn a whole heap of lot of spatial geometric type skills. Um, at the end of the day, I want them to be able to move around these models. So um, what I might do now is share my screen and just show you a few of the other things, um, how I set this up. So here we are. Uh, this is something that I'm encouraging the students to do in class as we do science here, um, just to engage with the new idea and push the boundaries a bit. Um, do something that helps you understand how it works. And, and that's a really the motivation for um, building these models and um, working on the bench. Um, makes sense. Uh, can you describe how it works? Can you use the correct words? Can you test the truth? Does it actually work this way? Can, does it match the scientific evidence? And, and they're the kinds of things that I see when students are moving the models around the table. And you, I say to them, oh, does it actually work that way? Um, uh, I use this torch when we talk about eclipses um, and shine that on there because um, 
shining and on there will tell us something about phases of the moon. And this directional beam also casts a shadow so we can work on the eclipses, make sure we've got them right. So we're actually through this system, building these models, we're actually testing the truth. And um, some of the misconceptions or um, errors or come out and uh, that's really important and gives us an opportunity to, to fix that. So um, there's a lot of good work to do um, in a, a unit like this. So um, as I said, uh, this idea came to me from thinking about what was happening with Minecraft. And you know, when I saw that square sun, I thought immediately that um, use these origami water bombs to build uh, our model, okay? So, uh, and, the, and the students identify with all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a lot easier than building a sphere and we all understand that why the planets are spherical uh, because a sphere minimizes the surface area to a given volume. So um, these are the instructions that I used in class here out of a book on that I have on origami. So, um, we followed those along and built these things. So um, what I've got, just got to show you to finish off this video is examples of students' work. Um, and it was a really rewarding experience to see uh, and work in this kind of way, getting away from um, computer screens, getting away from diagrams, um, because we can all, as teachers, jump up onto the board and uh, tell students how the phases of the moon work and, and what sequence they're in. But it's, it's quite interesting to watch them develop these ideas uh, using their models. Um, and you can see some really good work there from students using these models to develop these ideas, uh, which, is, which is really good. And what I had, um, to help them or guide them. I might show you that just to finish off. Here is, uh, I often use little checklists uh, built on I can statements. I can uh, build a simple model. I can position my models correctly. I can use the model to do certain things. Um, and what I do is when I move around the room, I can just check those things off as students complete them or they can demonstrate these things to me and it helps guide the question, helps guide their thinking and gives them a real sense of direction about what they need to do to demonstrate uh, the things they need to, the knowledge they need to know to, in, to cover this unit. Okay. Uh, thank you and I hope, I hope that's been a useful idea for you.